So the first problem I want to solve for you is chapter 24. This is in Surway and Jewett, Physics for Scientists and Engineers, um, edition 9, chapter 24, problem number 12. So the idea is we have a charge. In this case, for me, it's a 270 microcoulomb charge. And then we're going to enclose it in a cube. And here it tells us that the cube is 60 centimeters along each side. And that is actually invariant. We don't really care about that. And the charge inside is producing a, an electric field. And so there's an electric field that's equal distant because it's at the center. It is equal through all six sides of the cube. So we're looking for the flux through each face. And we're looking for the flux through the whole surface. Um, I'm going to answer B first because that's the, the easiest and most logical one to find. Um, basically, what we're looking for is the flux through the entire cube. So, if we imagine that this cube is our Gaussian surface, then simply the flux is equal to Q enclosed in that surface, Gaussian surface, divided by epsilon naught. Okay? And so, really, we don't even have to worry about the integration or the flux through any of the sides. We're just looking for the total flux which is going to be the charge enclosed divided by the divided by the epsilon naught. And what is epsilon naught? It's the vacuum permittivity as stated by the AP. Um, I like to call it um, the permittivity of free space. And at any rate, it's this number. And so what I would like to do here is I am going to plug that into my calculator. I'm going to store it as E. Okay, because we're going to use it a lot in this in this assignment. So I'm going to type in the number 8.85 times, oh gosh, it helps to turn it on. 8.85 times 10 to the 12th, minus 12, sorry. And we're going to store that in alpha E. So we're going to turn on alpha, and that will get us the little green letters, and then E. So now, anytime I want to use epsilon, I'm just going to type E, and it's going to give me my number. Okay. So the flux through the entire surface is simply the charge enclosed, and for me, that is 270 microcoulombs divided by epsilon naught. And so 270, don't forget to use scientific notation please, divided by epsilon. And I've placed mine in scientific notation so I don't have to count the number of decimals. Seven. Um, and then we're going to have coulombs divided by, and the units of epsilon, you'll see here, are coulombs squared divided by meters, uh, newton meter squared. And so the units we get are newton meter squared over coulombs for the flux. Okay, and so we type this number into the total flux, 3.05 E7. And we can check our answers. I've already checked it. It's correct. Um, I'm sorry, I was going to do it one at a time, and I jumped the gun. And then if we want to find the flux through each of the cubes, or each of the sides of the cubes, rather, each, each side, that's that because the charge is in the middle of the cube, exactly in the middle, then the electric field going through each area is going to be the same because the electric field will be the same distance from all sides of the cube. And so if we simply take that number divided by 6, so the flux through one of the sides is going to be the number we just got divided by the total number of sides, and that's going to be 5.08 times 10 to the 6. Again, Newton meter squared over coulombs. And 5.08 E6. And if we check those answers, lo and behold, they're right. Okay, so then the question is, would your answers to part A or B change if the charge was not in the center? Well, if it's not in the center, but it's still within the cube, the answer for, for B would not change at all, because the flux through the entire surface is going to be a constant, because it's simply the charge enclosed 
but if we if we move it um, around then the flux through one side is going to be greater than the flux to the other side the area of each side is the same and as we if we move it so we look at a it's not really a cube say we move it over here the electric field over here is going to be very powerful and the electric field is going to be high through this surface and it's going to be very low through this surface because of the density of lines so the answer for a would change but not for b